Hey guys, it's JC from Motion BFX, and in today's video, we're going to be going over the brand new release, M How To. This is a pack created in collaboration with Yoris Hermans. It's available for both Final Cut and DaVinci Resolve, but in today's video, I'm going to be going over the Resolve version. So let's get into it. So once you've installed M How To from the installer, you want to head over to the Effects tab, select the toolbox, and then search M How To. Here you're going to find 54 titles, 13 effects, and 10 different transitions. And all the assets in this pack work on a drag and drop basis, so whether you're dragging a title onto the timeline or an effect directly onto a clip, you can achieve incredible results in seconds. So diving into this pack as a general overview, we have seven different sections to get into. We have the camera movements, the placeholders, add-ons, backgrounds, another set of placeholders, typography, and the transitions, which is the M How To section here. So we'll get started in the largest section of the pack, which is everything that comes under the titles. So first up is the add-ons. This is a super fun section filled with hand-drawn style graphics that spice up your videos. You can place arrows to point out an object, you can have call-outs to label something, or even these cool speech bubbles for a quote. These are great ways to give your videos more life with barely any effort. So I'll take you through the process of customizing some of these titles. Bear in mind, everything does work in a similar way, but I'll start with one of the most complicated ones in the pack. So with this process step title, by default, we have a five-step process with the number three being highlighted. So to make any adjustments here, we're going to head over to the right on the Inspector tab. And this is where you'll control all of the effects and graphics for Motion VFX. So the first thing to do is to check the box at the bottom that says 4K quality, if you're in a 4K timeline that is. This ensures the correct scaling and quality of the graphic. Next at the top, we have these in and out points. These control the animation where the layer starts and ends. What is really clever about these Motion VFX animations is that they automatically adjust the length of time that the layer is. So if I make it super long, it will go in and out in accordance to that time span. However, if you make it too short, the titles won't quite animate out due to the time it would take. So from here, we have the content controls, and this is your overarching control center. This is quite standard across every title and effect, and it allows you to manipulate the positioning, the size, the rotation. So use this for controlling the entire graphic as a whole, as opposed to individual sections that the rest of the tabs will control. And as a quick tip, whenever you make an adjustment to a setting, if you want to return back to the default, all you need to do is double click on the setting title. Then here we have five different tabs, which are the different steps. So I actually like skipping over these tabs at first and going straight to the graphics controls, because this is where you control how many steps you actually have. So right now we do have five, but if you want to go any lower, maybe it's four or three, choose that option here. And now you can then go into controlling the different steps. That for me allows you to get a more accurate representation of what you're going to look like at the end, as opposed to keeping it on the step five and then reducing it after you've adjusted the titles. And then diving into the actual step controls, you have all of the standard titling options. So you can choose the font, the colors, the size, and even the line spacing. So I'm going to change brainstorming to titles. And that's step one done. Step two, I'll go for effects. And step three, I'll go for transitions. Because this is the first one that I'll be placing in the video, I'm going to change which number is actually highlighted. So for this, all you need to do is go to the step number that you want to be highlighted. That's circle fill opacity, so put that to one. And then from here, I'll change the color of my number to black. So it stands out a bit more. Now I'll go to step three, and I'm just going to reduce that circle opacity all the way back down. And again, it should adjust the color of the text. And there we are. And of course, once you've got all the titles in a good place, you can then modify the colors if you want. I'll leave that yellow for now. You can choose whether you want a line or not. Again, I'm gonna keep that because you'd like the linking. And yeah, you can just customize it here so you can play around the different options to see what kind of style you like. If you want to make the circles bigger, the change the spread, you know, you have all the options to make sure you get the desired result you're looking for. And just like I mentioned before, everything can be adjusted in the inspector tab. Whether it's the size, shape, or color of this frame, or simply adjusting the percentage of this progress bar by using this slider. And another way to use this progress bar is to make it into a loading screen. So to do that, you want to make sure you're at the end of the animation intro. So that's usually around when it gets to 85%. From here, you want to keyframe and make that zero. Then we're going to move along before it starts animating out. It's about here, make that 100. And then from here, you want to take out the in and out points then we'll just change the title to loading. And now when you play this, you have your perfectly made loading screen. 
So from here, we'll move on to the small but effective section, which is the backgrounds. Now, these are great ways to add some interest when you have text or other graphics. So the first background we have is this cloud background. Now getting into the inspector for this, you wanna first again, hit that quality box and we have the in and out points just as before, whether you want the background to animate in or just be there already. So for this one, I'll actually toggle these on and off. So when we're at the start and end of the layers, the background is already there. Then you'll go into the plasma controls and this is where you'd first, in my opinion, you want to modify the colors. So let's go for more similar to yellows we had before there, and then we'll just brighten that up. And now you're really starting to see that plasma effect. From there, you can actually adjust what that plasma looked like, you know, playing around with these sliders, going up and down, playing with the contrast. Again, this is why I say, you know, have full creative freedom. And if anything goes wrong, just like I mentioned before, just double click the title and you go back to default. And then from here, you have the window controls. As you can see, this is a box within a box. So you can just adjust what that looks like, whether you even want a window or you can have the straight plasma, adjusting the size, the blur. You have full control to really get the background you're looking for. And the next background we have is the dimness. And I put this on the second layer because this is actually best used when it's on top of footage. It's a really cool effect that adds a slight blur and dimness to the footage. So it makes it a lot easier when you are putting text on top of it. So from here, we can of course change. Right now we're in almost like a black and white grayscale mode. We can of course add color if we want to. So if we're sticking with that yellow theme, you can add that there. You can adjust the amount of blur you get. So obviously the more blurry it is, the easier it would be to put footage on. And now if I show you with a simple add-on, it's a lot easier to see this add-on when the blur is there as opposed to when we don't have this layer on. So this dimness background is really effective when you do want to show some text. And then if we were to skip to the bottom of the backgrounds, we have the haze, which works in a very similar way where you put it on top of footage and then you can use the inspector tab to control how intense you want that. So for these, I'd say when you want the footage to be a certain color with the blur, I would use the dimness. When you want to keep the original colors, but just have the footage be a bit more visible, that's when I'd say to use the haze. You can adjust how you want this haze. So if you change the haze blend and lower that, it now brightens up a little bit more. You can choose a scale of how much there actually is. So again, you can really play around with this and get the desired results. And if you've noticed, when I've used the process step titles in this video, I've actually used the haze background. It just makes it stand out that much more. And the last two backgrounds are the dots and grids. And these are more abstract backgrounds where you don't really need to put footage behind them. So just like always within this inspector, you can control what this looks like. So if I was to make the dots really big, you can change the opacity of them, of course, the colors. So you have full control to create exactly what you're looking for. One thing to note though, whenever you do see grain controls, whether it's in a background, an effect, just note that grain is quite intensive on your editing device. So if you do notice the backgrounds are a little slow to play back, it's probably because of the grain. If you uncheck that, you should have no problems playing them back. Now moving on to placeholders. And if you recall back to the beginning of the video, I did mention placeholders twice. So there's a placeholder section in the effects tab, as well as the titles. Now these are great for intros when you want a logo to animate in a cool way, or maybe you're introducing a brand sponsorship. Drop the placeholder onto the timeline. We'll go to the inspector tab and I'm gonna hit the logo control and all you need to do is hit browse. Then from here, you'll go into your folders and find the correct logo and that's it. You can see the logo is now there. And that works the exact same way as the other logos. And then if you will go into the magnification placeholder, what this does is add a cool magnifying glass effect. So we can adjust where we want this magnifying circle to be once we find our placement. So if I go back in the video a bit, I'm gonna highlight this button. So I'll go there. And if we wanna reduce the size, I'll make this a bit smaller. So that's right in the middle. And then from here, I'll just adjust that zoom just to really highlight that the button he's pressing. Playing that back, you can see now we go onto that button, bang, that's where we want it to be. And that bit quicker, and we have a finished result. So this is a really cool way to bring attention to things. And just like I showed you, it's super easy to manipulate. If you don't want this outer circle, you can just uncheck that doodle box. But I do think it brings a little bit more life and allows you to see that you are having that magnifying effect. And finally, to finish off the titles, we're going to go into the largest section, which is the typography. Although it's the biggest section, it's by far the easiest to use because all you need to adjust is the text and how you want it to look. Everything else just works. So I really recommend having a browse of these titles to familiarize yourself with them because you can definitely save yourself a bunch of time using these titles as opposed to manually creating them. So now we'll get into the effects tab where you can really level up your footage, starting off with camera movements. And just like you're seeing now, these allow you to zoom into your footage in a super dynamic way. So there's six different effects here, but my first recommendation is to not use these effects directly onto your clip 
but instead using an adjustment layer. What this does is one, allow you to have more control over the zoom effect by not manipulating your actual footage. Two, it means the effect will be in place even if you have text on the timeline. And three, if you have one really long clip, it means you can zoom in for a certain amount of time as opposed to it being the entire length of that clip. So if I drag this 3D zoom onto the adjustment clip, You'll see in the inspector, we have these three different tabs. So starting off with camera controls, but unlike some of the effects and titles that I've shown you before, there is no in and out checkbox for this. Instead, you have these sliders. And what these do is control how fast or slow the zoom is gonna come in. So if you don't want any animation at all, you can just slide that to make it zero. If you want it quite quick, you can just lower the number. If you want it to zoom in quite slowly, just play around with this slider and you can get the effect of how fast the animation will come into play. So I'll just reset that. Next, we have the zoom target. So if I move the playhead in, I can see this is where it's zooming into. So the camera target is just moving where that zoom moves to. Next, we have the zoom and this controls how much you're zooming into the footage. Following that, we have the X and Y offset, which work in a very similar way to the zoom target, just moving where that footage is zoomed into. After that, we have the different rotations. So you can control if you want this to be more 3D, how that look is going, but you obviously want to be careful with this because you will start to reveal the background if you go too far. And again, a very similar setting with the camera perspective. Of course, you want to remain careful, not revealing the background. Now there's nothing wrong with revealing the background. For me, it just ruins that 3D effect. Next, we have the grid controls. And this is a very subtle thing, but it adds a slight texture to your footage. So toggling that on and off, you can see it doesn't add much, but if you were to zoom in and then change the color, toggling that on and off, you can then see the difference it's making. This is completely personal, whether you want the grid or not, you can just adjust it to how you like it. Lastly, we have the background controls. Now this is only going to come into play if you do like what I mentioned before and change the camera target a bit too much to reveal the background. And then you have the options to manipulate those colors. I again think these effects are best left where you can't see the background because for me, it just sells that 3D image look a bit more. So you wouldn't have to worry about this tab. And these controls work very similar with the other camera movements. So this camera pan is gonna zoom into your footage and then pan across the screen. So there's no in and out animation for this one. So wherever you have that adjustment clip, you will automatically be zoomed in. As you can see, going back and forth in this layer, we instantly zoom in and then you have your start point. So if I set my start point there, it's kind of like the top right. And how you know where the bottom left is, because as you can see, if I keep sliding this, it looks like it just keeps going. But there's a mirror effect with this, so that way it's a lot more seamless if you do slightly go past the edge. So I can see where that mirroring effect is at the bottom. That's where I want to be the bottom of my screen. Now when I play this back, you can see we're traveling from the right to the left. So all of these camera movements will work in a similar way. If I put on this camera shake option to show you that, and what this does is provide your footage with a subtle shake and a blur around the edges where you could use this to create an effect making it look like a vision or maybe a dream. You can just modify how much you want that shake in the shake controls as well as the blur. And then you have a super cool way to create an effect that looks like a flashback or maybe a dream. Now, the last one I'll touch on is the multiple zoom. What this does is, as it says, allows you to zoom in different places in the same zoom clip. So the zooms into here, then we move out, then we move there. Then when it comes to controlling the points that you're zooming into, when you open the movement control section in the inspector tab, you're going to see these different targets. Now to be able to know where these different targets are, you're going to need to turn on the fusion overlay. Do that by going to this drop down menu and highlighting fusion overlay. Then you'll see these three green boxes. Each of these boxes indicate where the target zoom is. So if I move target one, you can see this top left box is moving. The same thing for target two and target three. So once you've got all those targets in the places that you want, you've got your result. And next we have the placeholders. Again, super easy to use by directly dragging the effect onto your footage. First, we have the avatar. Now this is great for when you want to put yourself in the corner of the screen whilst explaining something else that is the full size. From here, you can adjust what you look like inside. So if you go to the media controls, that's where you can make yourself bigger, move yourself left and right. Then the content controls, as I explained before, this is the overarching control center. So you can put that wherever you want. So if I put the bottom left, make it a touch smaller. And now we're getting that effect of the girl here explaining the image in the background. And the one after that is the quick tip. And this works in a very similar way, except instead of a circle, it's a box and it does have this description down here. So you can of course change that text or just hitting that box and remove it. And now you have the same effect in a square. Next, we have three of these split placeholders that are a little bit more complicated, but nothing you guys can't handle. When you hover over these different placeholders, you can see that the clip is shown twice. 
Now, of course, these aren't meant to duplicate the clips, but show two different ones. This could be used for comparing camera qualities, comparing photos, or just showing two different clips side by side. So to get the desired effect, what we're going to have to create is a fusion clip. This is like a grouped folder of these clips, allowing the placeholders to work correctly. So step one when creating a fusion clip is to understand how many pieces of footage we need. So if I drag split one onto this clip, in the inspector, it's going to say built for a fusion clip with three sources. And the three different sources we have here is the front camera, rear camera, and what we have in the background. So now that I know we need three sources for this fusion clip, I'll go ahead and delete this. I have the three sources here, so I'll go ahead, highlight them, right click, new fusion clip. Now what that's done is now showing the clip we have on the bottom layer. But don't be alarmed, all the clips are safely in there. To double check this, all you need to do is click the fusion tab and you can see we have the three different sources alternatively you could right click this and go to open in timeline and then you can see the three different clips here now when we put this split onto it the bottom layer which is the drone shot on the mountains that is now the background we have the front camera image and the rear camera image of course we can change what these titles are go into the caption controls here so i'll put girl painting in caption 2 i'll put the painting inspiration and there we have it we can toggle on and off that background if we want to remove it and then put one of the backgrounds from the titles back behind. But for now, I think I'll keep it on. And that's how you create a fusion clip for the split. Now, if you get to this point and you decide you want to reorder some of the clips, all you need to do is reopen that. So I have it open in this tab. But if you don't remember, all you need to do is right click and go to open timeline. Then from here, just move around the different layers. Now, if I shuffle around the order, we now have the girl on the right, the drone clip on the left and the lighthouse in the background. Of course, now the labels don't make any sense, but you get the gist. The next placeholder we have is the underlight. Now this gives your footage a framed glow effect. Not much to go into with this one as it is quite simple. All it does is frame your footage in this box and then it adds a glow behind. You can first make any adjustments in the content controls. So if I make this a touch bigger, then in the screen controls, you can control whether you want media or just a straight box. I'm going to keep the media for this option. Once you do that, you don't really need to touch the colors because that's only if you do have the color solid. And then you have these mask options. Now, what this is going to do is just allow you to control how you want the footage cut out. If I just round the corners a bit, I'll leave everything else as it is. And the light controls is how you manipulate the glow behind. Now, you'll notice there's no color to control the color of the glow because you're not actually putting a color behind, but in fact, it's reflecting the footage. So if I scroll through on this, you can see the background starts to get brighter as that is reflected in the actual footage. So from here, if you don't want so much glow, you can, of course, make those adjustments so it's not too overbearing for you. And then you do have the background controls if you do want another color behind. If not, it will be transparent. So if you have other footage under this layer or a background layer, that will be shown. And the last placeholder is the wipe option. Now, what this does is it adds a black vertical line across the screen where it almost transitions between the two clips. So this is a great way to compare something that is quite similar, but you want to show the differences. So for this, as it's a fusion clip, we want to drag this onto a clip to understand how many sources we need. We can see that is two. So we'll go ahead and delete that. I'll now get the second clip. I'll highlight these, create a fusion clip and drag that onto it. So I'll modify the description. So for this one, we have an ungraded version. And then here we have a graded version. So now playing that back, you can see the line transitions across showing the two different versions. You can control whether you want this wipe to be horizontal or vertical, you know, whether you want it to come on the top or bottom. And if you want it to go from left to right, and those are your placeholders. And now to finish off, we have the transitions. These are again, super easy to use where you'll drag and drop the transitions between the clips. You can adjust the lengths by dragging the box up here and the transition will automatically adjust to the time. Just like everything else in this video, you can fine tune the transitions and adjust the look of these in the inspector tab until you get your desired result. I do hope this overview has been helpful so you're now ready to use this pack to its fullest. Remember, if you have any questions at all, please drop them down below or head to the Motion View Effect website. Thank you for watching. I've been JC and this has been your M How To Overview.